What is a hadith that is authentic? What are the conditions for a hadith to be authentic? Firstly, in here, the Encyclopedia of Islam is saying we can't know. No, I'm telling you, what are the conditions that we use to say that a hadith is authentic? He says, so and so said to so and so, wait, who lived and was wait. born at some time, and was that living at the time of the person to whom, for, from whom he received it. And this person was reliable and trustworthy, as you get from the biographies um, that were attributed to them. But all those biographies are written for 300, 200 at least years after those men about whom the biographies were written had died. You can't get valid biographical information 200 years later. So the hadith are in total worthless that's, as historical documents. No, that's the mistake. In total, it's not accurate. So there is, it's true that there are fabrications out there. Hadith, that it's not even that they have a chain of narration. No, no, they're complete lies. They're lies. And there's people that use this hadith because they don't know they are lies and they are spread. And you must come along, a lot of Muslims, and they tell you, oh, there is this hadith that says this. And you're like, subhanAllah, this is completely fabrication. Yeah, I'm talking about the accepted books of Bukhari now. We know this. Exactly. Bukhari had 600,000, he whittled down to 7,000. So I know, I know what you're talking about. This is addressing the alleged hadith, the alleged authentic hadith. It's saying the Western scholars don't care about the ones Muslims are dismissed. They're okay. going after the ones that Muslims say are genuine, the Sahih okay. Okay. ones. That, that thing's that are Sahih. What is not authentic? Narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar to Nafi to Imam Malik. That chain of narration. What is not authentic? All right. The question is, for a Western scholar, how can you know those men narrated it to each other? What do you mean a Western scholar? Someone that is believed in the Quran? Is Nobody in a Western university regards the hadith system as a way of knowing anything about the past. I won't, I won't read again, I could read the another um, from the Wiley Blackwell, and Wiley Blackwell is a very sound academic publishing house, and they produced a, an introduction to the, to the hadith, and a big chunky book, and in that, they basically, and the scholars in the West who look at the hadith say that all this gives you extreme, those who really like, like much, um, um, Molska and um, what do we got? What do we got? What? Yeah, Motsky, Schurler, Gurkha. These are major Hadith scholars in the West and they argue over what you can know, how far back you can go with, with the Hadith criticism and how you can produce models to try and assess whether this Islamic tradition is valid. But even they all say that when the fruits of this kind of research yields next to nothing of historical information about Muhammad and his life and that of his companions. So what we're saying is that no matter what you do in terms of what you regard as the science of hadith, it's all worthless from an historical point of view. When we, when, with, when we talk about historical science in the West, true history is not what you guys believe it is. Get, get it, and, and this example that I gave you, Abdullah, Abdullah bin Umar to Nafi to Mali. How do you know they're valid trans those men transmitted? That's why I'm asking you, what's they didn't the transmit. The only way, the only way you know they transmitted is by a, a hadith, which is which is produced in writing 200 to 250 years after the event. The names of those transmitters are given not at the time they're transmitted, but 200 to 250 years after the event. And the biographies of them, these men as authentic transmitters are given 200 years at least after those men lived. So you're That's the problem. You've, yes. got a, you've got a yawning two century gulf at least between these alleged facts and the writing down of them. In, in our historical, it's like me saying, oh, the Battle of Waterloo took place in 1815 and the Duke of Wellington led the British Army of the English army and, and Blücher led the, 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 uh, the, the Germans against Napoleon who, re who, who led the French and he was the Emperor of France and nothing at all was written about the Battle of Waterloo between 1815 and 2022 and I'm now telling you I've just written it down here do you believe me he said get lost it's 200 years yes, yeah. between the events and you telling me just, we have nothing yeah, in between that's, 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 that's the thing now I'm telling you then Okay. Who's, who's making it up? Who's making and, it and if I say, oh, don't worry, I know that um, um, the Duke of Wellington passed it to the Duke of York, who said it to um, Queen Prince Albert, who said it to Queen Victoria, and I, I'm saying to this now, I've written it down now, two centuries later. Okay, what the, what How can it have any validity? Yeah, the information you give me is not valid. Why is that important, the writing? What's what? Why is that important, the writing? 
Abdullah bin Umar did not write it for nothing and did not write it for Imam Malik. They told each other. You say they told each other, but the statement that it, they told each other is only written 200 years after they allegedly told Why each other. Why does it matter? Why does it matter that it's written? Uh, first of all, some hadith were written before that. Like, well, give us the writ earliest written hadith. Ibn Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al as he wrote a hadith, and there is a hadith that says explicitly that the Prophet said, yeah, wrote. Right, which collection is it in? This specific hadith? I think it's, it may be in the, in the Bukhari, but I'm not sure. In what? Well, but sure. this is the point. Sure. It, the, the, my point is this: it doesn't matter which cover the major collection is in. Bukhari wrote 200 yeah, to 250 years yeah. after the event, so that, that that hadith is only written for the first time. Yeah, but then, okay, it doesn't matter. Why the transmitter uh, tradition is not valid? Because because the transmitter tradition is only written down about 200 years later. Why is it important that it's written down? It's important that it's written down because otherwise you should believe me if I talk about the Battle of Waterloo 200 years after it took place without any writings about it. They're contemporary. Exactly. So now I write something that oh that building is mine and I show the the, the paper written down. And you will believe that? No, mine. because that building because exists paper. now. I could go to that building and see it exists now. Or I could go to deeds in um, the land registry, you say, which so, is who owns that building. You okay. haven't got any existing um, edifice for me to look at now. So having it written down, having it written down or in memory, is yeah. not different. Because no. even if it's written down, you will reject it. So. No, if it was written, if, if the Muslims could say, right, um, 20 years after Muhammad died, we've got, um, we've got written documents about what he said and what he did, other than the Quran. We've got various written documents about his life, his battles and so on. 20 years after he died. But no, we don't because the, collect the information you have is in the Sirah and the Sirah and the Hadith. What have we got today? It's what we've got today that I'm talking about. Well, what we've had from the Middle Ages, in fact. What's come down to us? 